All right. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. This is uh, our official 12th meeting of the Council of One Channeling Group Channel Panel. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Get yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. A bunch of you have been here for the entire three months. And um, we're going to have we're going to have a, a nice a nice bring it all to a head sh shebang tonight. Um and uh, and so I hope you I hope you are ready to strap in, put your seatbelts on. Um, yeah. We've been we've been kind of opening your minds systematically to <laughs> multi-dimensional experiences every week since we've begun. We've been encouraging you to practice simulating these multi-dimensional experiences every day when i work with people one-on-one -on -one, i know what they're doing i know how much they're practicing i know if they're tapping in i know if they're writing down their visions i don't know that with all of you because it's too many people some people have time and some people don't some people are just starting and some people ha like already knew how to 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 you know channel already knew how to bring their stuff in so I don't have that same, you know, uh, connection with each of you individually. And that's kind of sad for me because I really love watching the depth of my students' lessons and growth. Um, but because of the, the community site, because of the text feed, and because so many of you all are hanging out in the live stream every day, I do get these nice tastes of these beautiful experiences you all are having with yourselves. I don't know how many of you are witnessing it. I don't know how many of you are seeing what's happening to your, you know, your comrades. Um, but I know that everybody feels the importance when we're here on Sunday nights. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you for being willing to, hold this energetic space with us and um and let me know if you have any ideas of how we can do this better because we're just getting started y'all that we're three months in and we're just getting started and um to to witness how we used this group last week was amazing <clears throat> and thinking of it as a healing group specifically, a healing group that channels uh, felt really Im important to me. So I don't know if that feels important to y'all to be a part of a multidimensional healing group that happens to channel, but that's what I believe that we're doing here. And, um, and the invitation is more than just a singular invitation because you're chosen council is an open sketchbook of guidance beyond whatever you could imagine but are you using it and the council of councils is a hyper upgrade it's something that i never even conceived of before this group it, and and it's it's a hyper experience i i call them i call them the hyper council the Council of One is my council, and all of the councils is the Hyper Council. If you haven't tapped in to the Hyper Council on your own, and some of you I don't think have because I think some of you are still resisting receiving, and if you are, I hope you'll talk about it tonight um, because I think if there's anything important that we witnessed last week, it was the value of being real with the community, being raw and real with where you're at. Y'all know how much y'all got from Zori's vulnerability and honesty, and y'all saw what we did for him. So please be open and honest with us as well tonight. We always want to hear, <clears throat> we want to hear your wins. We want to hear what you're discovering, uh, but we also want to hear what you're struggling with because um, we're there for you. You understand? Like that's what, collective consciousness is about is about sharing all of our wisdom all of our perceptions openly that's what it's about and that's what we're learning how to do here 
Hope that makes sense to everybody. Hope that's what you signed up for because <laughs> that's what you're getting. Um, and <clears throat> that being said, let's go around um, real quick. Can you uh, start for us, Marvelous, and just tell us anything that feels important for you to share about your practice this week or anything else? Um, so thank you, everyone. So good to see you all. I look forward to today all the time. <laughs> Um, so this week, um, I, I do different practices and uh, some of the other meditations that I do are different than what we do. So what I'm trying to hone into is how do I kind of blend in all the things that I'm doing, right? Because at some point, I feel like I'm all over the place, mm -hmm. but I'm interested in the other things I'm doing, right? I'm interested and I am, I'm passionate and I'm learning a lot. So I don't want to give any of it up. So I'm trying to formulate in my head, how does it all come together, right? And then with this panel, also trying to see where like a part of me and I'm, I'm being very vulnerable, a part of me feels like I'm not going to be here for the long haul. I'm going to be here, but then at some point I'm going to step away, which kind of makes me sad because I don't want to step away. But a part of me kind of feels that I'm, I'm going to move on. Right. So I'm, I'm not trying to do anything with that information. I'm just recognizing that it's there. And then with it being there, then it's, how do I, give myself to something that I kind of feel is temporary, right? Like, you know, when you give yourself, you give it a hundred percent, but you're like, well, if you ain't gonna, if I'm not gonna be here for the long haul, why should I give a hundred percent? So that's like my human brain, the way it thinks. It doesn't mean that that's how my heart feels. So I'm reconciling. So I'm, I'm reconciling all those things. I did the meditation. And I asked the council, right, for the council of councils. I went in actually this morning and I saw a lot of rainbow colors representing all of us, each, each of us representing a different color. And I did sit in the healing chamber, but the healing wasn't like other healings. It was more like take a pause take a pause and see where you fit in, right? And do I need to fit in? Or do I, like, what is what does this mean for me? So that's where I'm at. It's, it's uh, I, I, I don't have like one word to say, but thank you for listening. Awesome. Thank you, hon. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And no one sticks with anything forever. Like I've been teaching stuff for 20 years and everybody does something for a few months, you know, maybe a year if they're lucky and, and they move on. So uh, that's just how things work, but to be aware of it is beautiful. Uh, it's awesome. And, and I would invite you instead of thinking about what you can give to the group marvelous um, I would invite you to think about what you can receive from the group mm -hmm. um, because you're always trying to give and always trying to give. And um, I know you have a lot of your own things and you've always kind of been on the outskirts of whatever, you know, you've done with us and, and we love you exactly as you are and keep doing all the things you love. You can't fit everything into your life. You can't be a, a ceramicist and a, and a woodworker and a, you know, media mogul and an influencer and a this and a, you know, like there's, there's only so much time any of us, you know, have in, in our lives and, um, and we love you and your energy is welcome here as long as, you know, you're, you, you feel called and when you need to move on, then you're welcome to move on. You know, we, we love you either way. Um, <clears throat> this has been the best my my best attempt at creating a, a monthly membership that I've ever done and um 
and I'm overjoyed <laughs> with the with the changes, with the value that I've seen in your lives. And um, and I believe that that as long as that value is being shared in both directions, you know, not just in one direction. I believe as long as we're sharing our lessons with each other, but then also receiving from others that that value takes care of itself. Like it seems very, you know, self-evident to me. Um, but, uh, but thank you as always. And, and this is what we're here for y'all is, is to be real about all of this. And this is a lot of weird shit that I've, <laughs> I've dumped on y'all for, for months and months. And every single week has been a different level of weirdness and y'all are going to get another one tonight <laughs> you know <laughs> Kristen's excited um and 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 the idea is it's not a curriculum and you don't have to keep up and you don't have to do it just like anyone else you can approach it wherever you're at and and I really like that. I really like that a lot. And I didn't know how it was going to work with a group of people all kind of wherever they are on their spectrum, wherever they are on their journey, all learning together. But I feel like this has worked very well. And, and I'm really honored to have been a part of it with all of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Kristen, can you tell us anything that feels relevant about your practice this week or anything else? Sure. Um, I think like Marvelous, I'm integrating this practice with what's coming through intuitively for me. Um, so I've been doing a lot of shadow work the past few months. And um, with that, I recently came to the um, realization that I'm doing a lot of karmic clearing, especially the past few weeks. Um, and... So taking the practices here, but then also going into the shadow and asking for information about my darkness to integrate that into the light has been beautiful. Um, this week particularly was very rough. I full on the waterworks at work, bawling my eyes out, like makeup, what? That just got wiped away like <laughs> it was very very intense this week and I'm sure it has to do with the cosmic alignment of the planets and the full moon the this and the that and it's just it's hard it's hard being a human um but I also feel the power and the strength that I have that's coming through me in part from this group, um, like working on Zori last week as a group, that energized me in a way I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. um, I've been tapping into things that I've never really been able to tap in before. Um, mm -hmm. My crystals are getting hot now when I work with them. And I shared the story about my friend um, with his job interview and I was like, this is too coincidental. And instead of me like saying, this isn't real or whatever, it's like, this is part of make my gift is manifesting. And um, it was beautiful to just tap into that and also see the person receive and how they also felt it too. So I didn't share right away because now I feel as though like I'm violating people's energy when I tap in mm. without consent uh, because I'm just doing it, I guess, as like an innocently, right? Um, but I'm very close with this person. So um, it took me a little bit. I was like, hey, I just want to let you know like, what I did. And he was like, of course you did. Um, and he's like, I felt the power as I went into the interview. He's like, I could feel like the energy beaming in. And he got the second interview um, hours later. So 
yes, I'm, I'm very thankful for how we are all doing our own separate work similarly and also differently at the same time and how we're inspiring each other along the way. Um, because we all are in different paths and we're all tuning into different frequencies. But I'm learning from each of you, as I'm sure you're learning from me. And the biggest takeaway for me is just to trust what's coming through, not to second guess. Um, now, I'm not sure where I got this message from, but it was, if you're looking to connect with your higher self or guides or whatever, they're going to give you small little messages first. They want to see, they're testing you. Can you receive this little nugget of information? And if you're poo-pooing the little things, how are you supposed to handle the big shit, the big stuff, right? Which is true. So that's why I'm sharing with all of you to just trust that first instinct that's coming up because that's the truth. It's when we start analyzing it in our mind, that's when we start putting our spin on it. Um, so yeah, here I am in the dumps, in the shadow work. <laughs> just, I'm fucking used to it at this point. So I was just like, whatever, what else can we throw at me at this point? Um, like I said, I've cried enough. Oh, this is what I wanted to share with the group tonight. So when we were talking about our healing chamber, I actually have one that I physically go to. It's my closet. Um, so I put a bunch of blankets down, I pillows, and I took a couple of naps in there this weekend. And I could feel the astral surgeons working on my brain. Mm. And then I also have my guardians outside the door, my cats, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> my protective panthers, because they just know when I start doing work, they're always right there with me. Like my one's right there waiting for me to go sit in my my chamber so we can go do some meditation work. Um, so that's another invitation is create an actual space for you to go inside and do the healing work. Like I said, it's my closet. There's clothes all around me. I push my clothes aside. That's where my head goes and I do my work. Um, it's dark, it's quiet. And it's becoming a beautiful portal for me of the healing. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. And and I love the importance of a physical space. And, and I've had that many times. Uh, a Harry Potter room that I go into for meditative journeys. That's beautiful. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Heather, can you share with us anything that feels important about your practice this week? Um, yes. Let's see what's important about practice. I, this week, I guess, um, I do know that there was a mirror, there was a mirror, like a full length mirror that pulled up last week that just was in my sacred space. And I'm like, that's kind of random just to see a mirror right there. Um, so this week I've been kind of investigating the mirror a little bit more. Um, and there was no reflection of myself. So I know we, you mentioned that in the live today, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I, I could see like the record, the, you know, behind the normal, anyway, I couldn't see myself, but it, you know, the rest of everything else is reflected. Um, and so there was a kind of a lesson there that, well, part of it is I didn't, I was resisting it several practices. I didn't want to look at it. Um, so I guess there's a lesson that I'm, I'm re looking, I'm, I'm resisting looking at myself. And then also when I finally did go through the mirror, um, I, I kind of realized a little bit that I'm also having to choose who I want to be. Mm. Um, so there's a little bit of that responsibility that I'm afraid of as well. Um, so I guess the mirror has been on my mind a little bit. And then um, I know this week too, there was the the homework to kind of get inside the, the hyper council. Um, and I could visualize it, but I seem to have resistance in feeling it. And and resistance to visualizing any light. Um, but I could, but it was, uh, well, but it was nice to have everybody around, but I, I do seem to have some resistance to actually feeling any any light or connection. But I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, yeah, okay, that's. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. 
Um, yeah, the mirror is important and you've had things like that before that you weren't ready to face. And I told you they'll be there later when you're ready and they've come back and you've gone, you know, inside of them and had found experiences. So that mirror will, will be the same way for you totally. And, um, <clears throat> and you have been resisting your own pleasure and purpose for much of your life anyway so resisting receiving it now kind of makes sense it's kind of like par for the course um i do encourage you to keep trying um allow yourself to receive you know um especially if you desire to give to others y'all you have to allow yourself to receive it, it's it's a cycle. It's a, you know, you have to let it come and let it go. That's a huge part of a lot of people's struggle with abundance and money is that they're dysfunctional in that flow. You got to let it come and you got to let it go. Okay. That's the invitation at least. <laughs> thank you for, uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, Bridget, what can you tell us about your practice your last week? Um, well, I've been doing it almost every day. I didn't get to do it this morning and I missed another day, but and some of the ones I thought I'd put in the feed were not there the next day. I don't know what happened, but they like disappeared and I had to redo them. Mm. That kind of stumped me, <laughs> but uh, I'm feeling so, so much, a lot all over. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier in the live, when you were talking this morning, that crows are showing up everywhere. I mm -hmm. mean, everywhere I go, there's like seven, ten crows in a bunch, and they're all squawking and flapping. And I don't know if they're trying to get my attention or what. I mean, they, they automatically get my attention, but I haven't really interacted with them yet, but that's my intention and in future is like to go outside when they're out there and sit and meditate and see if I can communicate or figure out. Cause they keep telling me, you know, listen for the, listen to the birds and then um, showing me birds, you know, so there's gotta be something there. So I'm feed trying them to some, feed them some bread, feed them some bird seed, give them some stuff. Well, they, they have plenty around here. I have a garden and stuff. So they're eating my stuff and they're eating out of my husband's truck. So they're supplied. It's just a matter of my going out there and actually mm -hmm. um, spending. I, like I've talked to them, but, um, you know, I've said hello or whatever, but um, I haven't ever really sat and tried to connect. Mm -hmm. um, that's on my new list of to do things is to sit mm -hmm. and connect with the birds. Or the crows, I should say, because it's mostly crows. I mean, I get a lot of birds coming around, but it's mostly the crows that are trying to get my attention, I feel. Awesome. And are you uh, seeing any more in your mind's eye? Um, since I've been doing the healing, no, that's mostly feeling. I'm not even mm -hmm. seeing color in there. It's mm -hmm. it's all dark and it's all sensation. Um like the last one I put up, it, it talks about how like starts off like half of my face goes numb, my eye and my cheek. And then it like spreads around the back of my head. And then it goes from the other side of my nose to the other side of my head and like merges. And then something came up my spine and it wasn't numbness. Like I was feeling on my face. It was something else. And it like connected me from the back that the gap that was there. And it was only a small gap, but, but it like came in and filled in the space. Mm. So, that was weird. And so <laughs> just trying to um, understand it all. And I mean, I assume that they're healing me or working on me or, or whatever. Because mm -hmm. uh, now, now feels very, you know, like wide, like it's very open, which is kind of unsettling sometimes because sometimes it's <laughs> happening out with people and mm -hmm. I feel it start to spread. And it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen and I'm not sure I'm ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's a, that's a beautiful description and, and thank you uh, for that. And um, 
there's nothing visuals are that are going to give you that sensation can't you know um i get that you want to see things but but feeling things is so much more valuable there's way more information there and um and yes it totally feels like healing to me it doesn't feel like anything nefarious it feels like it feels like something wise helping you uh reformat your patterning you know and that's what light work really is, is helping people reformat, you know, their, their structure. And we're going to talk about that tonight with uh, this crystal connection book um, and feeling kind of like overwhelmed when your crown is open is very normal. Um, and especially in social circumstances, because it can create very, very visceral sensory experiences. And it can be weird to be around other people when you're having out of body ecstatic, you know, feelings in yourself. And it doesn't, you know, but this is part of what we mean when we say multidimensional. Wanna make sure everybody understands multidimensional doesn't mean like I'm gonna go sit down and be multidimensional for 20 minutes. Multidimensional means learning to see that you're in other dimensions all of the time. And that information is gonna start crossing over you're going to start perceiving your past while you're talking to someone. You're going to start feeling, you know, uh, words from your, your guides while you're playing with your child. You're going to start feeling the truth of your higher self uh, in the middle of making love. You know what I'm saying? Like these things are going to begin to, to cross over. That's what multidimensional truly means. And remember that Seth says, we're already multidimensional. We don't have to like be enlightened to become multidimensional. We're already existing in all of the other dimensional uh, dimensions. It's just about whether we're able to perceive them or not. It's just a question of perception. And that depends on our frequency. It's just a game of frequency. Thank you, uh, Bridget. Oh, and let me change your name on here. Um, Um, and Emmy, can you tell us anything you can about your practice this week? You got to, uh, on, yep, there we go. Well, hello. hello. Um, <laughs> well, uh, my gosh, the week before like this, let me try to get my thoughts organized a little. I'm so bad. I'm scattered. I'm much better with typing out what I'm saying. Um, the week before last, I had been super, you know, last week, super overwhelmed. And, um, I've just felt a big kind of weight lift. Um, I don't know if this, the book that you're reading right now, Life's Golden Ticket. And like, it, when you, it's not just in this book, but I've, I've felt things and I, you know, I picture I have little visions while you're reading, but this one's really made me like deep cuts and like it's it's pushing me really <laughs> towards shadow work. Um, today I had this sort of <laughs> vision where I'm uh, seeing myself during a meditation, um, and I'm I don't know if you know Mortal Kombat, but I'm dressed like Katana. I'm like always I'm like more in these warrior modes now. So mm -hmm. funny. Um, and I focused on making a like a, a ball of fire. And I remember you saying, you know, take the feeling and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, so I I visualized that ball of fire just turning into a giant giant um fiery cloud almost and then i i pulled it back in towards myself into my heart <laughs> just that felt really really good um you know i've i've been making phone calls and i really almost grew up with a phone phobia because my father had his own business and people were always calling and I was just too shy. I don't want to answer and take messages, but that followed me throughout my life. Just the, a, 
weird fear of the phone, like something's really gonna happen to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've just been noticing so much, <clears throat> so much of what my fear has done to me throughout my life. And uh, I'm just super over it. <laughs> and um, I'm starting to have good dreams again instead of I, for a long time, I was having these horrible stress dreams and then and then nothing. And then, you know, I'm just, I just feel an overall kind of healing going on. I'm super grateful for that. Um, I went, I went into a memory of my, fa my father and I, and um, it was a particular tough memory. <laughs> Okay. Um, didn't want to get emotional, but I kind of apologized and um, just sat in that spot for a while. And like, I just, I keep, a, hopefully, you know, see it all as a progression in my, my journey, my healing journey. You um, know, if that makes any sense, that was kind of like my week. Um, and even if it's only been a few minutes here and there, I'm really trying to do all of these things, you know, the focus. And uh, I really think it's helping. And I also want to help others. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to make sense. I, I talk to two little kids all day. So when I'm actually talking to <laughs> adults, you know. All of that made sense to me, hon. <laughs> Thank you. That all made sense to me. Love it. Love it. Um, all right, everybody. So thank you, thank you for sharing yourselves openly and honestly. That's what we're here for. And we're never afraid of emotion here. Um, it's a part of the journey the ups and the downs, feeling good and feeling bad. It's positive and negative. Uh, there's polarity in all things. Okay, so we're never afraid of holding space for the highs or the lows. Thank you, thank you. Um, before we get going tonight, I wanted to read something to you all. This is an example I'm going to keep talking about the differences between working with y'all one-on-one -on -one and in this group, because I want the group to be as close to the experience of one-on-one -on -one as possible. And so I want to read you something that one of my one-on-one -on -one clients for uh, channeling higher self, which is, that's what this is for, but this is a group for it. I want to read you um, what she sent me. Um, this woman wanted to skip self-love and I've had a few clients that I've let skip self-love and go straight into channeling higher self. And it doesn't usually work very well. Usually there's things that they're hiding from and they bump into shadows and they don't know how to deal with them. Um, I talked to her for a little bit. She felt confident that she was ready. And I just want y'all to feel into what's happening in her practice and she's doing this every single day and she's writing me about what's happening every single day so i have a very intricate connected perception of her journey um and i'm having as close of a perception with all of you as i can as a group it's challenging <laughs> keeping up with a bunch of different people um but what's important is not whether i can keep up with your journey or not what's important is can you keep up with your journey can you write it can you record yourself can you transcribe that's what's important okay it doesn't matter whether i'm able to assimilate a particular meditation that you did or not what matters is are you keeping track of them are you paying attention to what's happening in these spaces because if not you're you're missing magic 
if you're not giving it your time and your attention, and if you're not pulling that back and you're not keeping track of it, you're missing magic. It's falling through the cracks. Okay. <clears throat> this woman has never meditated in her life before, like a few weeks ago. Today's question, how do I release fear of the unknown? The room had a wicker bench to the left against the wall. I sat to ponder my question before calling guides. I walked into the guiding light. A large heart-shaped glowing crystal of many colors topped with a glowing crown appeared above my head. Heard, you are of the divine. You are love. You are light. You already have what you wish. You are worthy. Fear is taught. It cannot dwell where love is. Let the crystal shine through you, releasing the fear. I love the symbolic meaning of the crown topped crystal heart. I stood under the crystal and let the light fill me. It felt warm. Back in my sacred space, lights of all colors filled the sky. So beautiful, feeling connected and powerful. That sounds like marvelous messages to me. Every one of you is doing this at your own level. You might not see it at that degree. You know, um, she has a gift for vision and she also has a gift for interpretation. So anything she sees, she finds an empowering interpretation of it, like instantly. It, it's like she was born to be a, a, a palm reader or something. Um, that's one of her gifts. But but the invitation of this is keeping track of your own journey, y'all, because y'all, there's no way you can understand how important these connections that you're making are. There's no way you can understand how important these conversations that you're having are. It took me a long time of hearing shit from the council to get like, oh, I really need to keep track of this shit. Like, this is gold and I'm losing all of it, you know? Um so that's the invitation. Um, and then I had to read this because tonight we're going to be talking all about crystals. And she's talking about her crystal crown, which is amazing. And I think Heather has a crystal tree, don't you, Heather? All right. Um, okay, everybody um, sitting up if you can. I know I would fall asleep if I laid down right now. Get I'm your take crystal. Say what? I need a 30 second break. Okay, do it. Do I'll it. be right back. Do it. Go ahead and get your crystals ready, y'all. And what we're going to be reading tonight is the Crystal Connection, a guidebook for plant, uh, personal and planetary ascension. The Crystal Connection. Write it down. If you're a super metaphysical geek, You'll want a copy. It's not easy to read. This is very much like reading raw. It's not easy to read, but it is super, super profound. Um, and as soon as everybody gets back, we're going to jump in. And then not only are we going to learn about crystals, We're going to learn how to use them along with our councils and our hyper council. I love the hyper council. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Look, Satsak, I have a crystal crown. <laughs> ah, nice. I love it. Are you going to wear it? I am. I'm back. I don't think nice. I've ever worn it. Oh, nice. Okay, Bridget Gracie. has hers. Rock yes. them, y'all. Rocking them. Rocking them. It's going to get hot tonight. Y'all thought it was hot before. It's going to get hot tonight. Um, okay. Everybody's back. We ready? All right. Pick up your two favorite crystals. And I want you to just hold on to them 
for the rest of this evening, unless you need to put them down for something. I want you to hold on to them. And I want you to let yourself play with how they how they sit in your hand. I want you to let yourself move them around so that you can feel what way is actually most comfortable for it to sit in your hand for a long time. So like for me, this one has this big slit and that always ends up going straight into my palm. The big flat part always ends up going straight into my palm because that's the center of where energy comes out. And so it always wants to sit right there, right? So you wanna move them around and find how they feel most comfortable in your hand. And when you find it, you wanna hold them very gently, not like tight, like you're afraid to lose them. You wanna hold them very gently, like, like there's almost a space of air around them, like almost so that they could like vibrate in your hands without going anywhere. You wanna hold them lightly. And I just want you to hold on to them. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about crystals briefly first. And then we're going to read a little bit of the crystal connection, which is one of the most high frequency light encoded channeled books that I've ever read in my life. Okay. And there's a reason that we're laying all of this down. We're going to lay down a framework. Y'all have all been learning a lot of crazy out there things. And tonight we're going to learn, lay down a framework that you will all have to operate inside of, okay? And do not believe that you can remember all of this logically. Um, and I would much rather have you holding on to your crystals lightly than writing down notes. We're recording this. You can go back and watch it to take notes later if you want to. What I would like for you to do is to hold on to your crystals and learn about them in a way you never have before, okay? I want you to understand that crystals are not pretty ornaments. Crystals are literally metaphysical tools. Crystals are frozen light. Ice is frozen water. Crystals are frozen light. And they are transducers of energy. They're like tuning forks and there's a negative and a positive. The negative is a receiving end and it works like a satellite dish. This is receiving. This is why you don't want those crystals that are cut off flat so they sit up. That's, that's like castration for a crystal. You want it raw. This is a satellite dish. You want it to be able to absorb. And then what happens is what makes a crystal a crystal is that all of the molecules are symmetrical. They're all perfect hexagons. And so there's no energy lost inside of this, y'all. The whole thing operates like a tuning fork. Every bit of energy that enters here moves straight through to here. No energy loss. Okay, It's like fiber optic cable. And then you have it condensed to a point where it becomes like a laser. This is like a laser beam, not of light, but of, of subtle chi energy, of prana energy, okay? And <clears throat> when I was learning kundalini yoga, which is all about working with your body's frequency, using breath, using visualization to, to stoke your fire and really affect the, the harmonic frequency of your body, I asked my teacher, we're just playing with electromagnetic energy here. How do we magnify it? And she said, I don't know, crystals? And so I got a couple of quartz crystals. Lemurians are my favorite because they're really, really clear. And then they have these horizontal lines on them. And those horizontal lines are like information. They're like Morse code. It's like information from the earth when they were being created. Um, all gems, all quartz, all stones are beautiful and perfect and move and collect energy in different ways. These are just my favorite. Whatever your favorites are, 
you play with those, okay? Um, what's important to understand is these are tools. And in order to truly get the benefit from them, you want to start utilizing them as tools, not leave them on your counter and then stick them in the moonlight and then put them back on the counter. You want to begin holding them while you meditate. You want to begin using them to work on yourself. You want to begin setting up grids on the floor that you lay inside of, like witchy shit, y'all. They're tools. They're tools, and I want you to begin to work with them. And everything we're doing tonight is about what these represent in the universe. And, and even larger, what we're really talking about tonight is that the entire fucking universe is crystalline in nature. The entire universe is crystalline in nature. As above, so below. Smaller things made of smaller things made of smaller things. Everything is crystalline, okay? These are just highly refined crystalline structures. And because of their highly refined nature, they have very optimized circuitry. And it's the optimized circuitry that has the effects that it has. And the effects are energetic. If you do this for like 30 seconds, you'll start feeling it like they're energetic, right? But the effects are more important than just energetic. The effects are consciousness stabilizing. The effects are consciousness stabilizing. So that chaotic monkey mind shit that you feel and live all the time, you hold these, they stabilize your consciousness. Why? Because they conduct energy at a very specific rate. It's like 26, 27,000 hertz a second. It vibrates 26,000 times every single second. This stabilizes consciousness. Not only does it stabilize consciousness, it connects consciousness to higher dimensions. These are portals. These are like multidimensional cell phones. Literally. Literally. And they're like multidimensional laser beams. And you can do psychic surgery. Literally. Literally. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to teach you a couple of simple ways to play with these. And then I'm going to let you play with them while I read you some from this book. You're going to listen to, to crystal stuff while you're playing with your crystals. All right. Two crystals, one in each hand. You're going to hold them very lightly with your fingertips. And you're going to hold them about 12 inches apart, pointing towards each other. And let them very slowly float towards each other. Very slowly float towards each other. And just notice what that space feels like as they get closer. It might feel heavier or thicker or tingly, like whatever it is. Just pay attention to the feeling of those crystals getting closer. I, de I feel it in my breath. I feel it in my lungs. And then let them get even closer. And then let them get so close, they almost touch, but don't let them touch. And just feel the space around each tip of, of crystal and notice how there is an awareness. There is a polarity. There is a tug. There's a pull. There's a pressure. Experiment with that pressure. The slower you move, and the softer you are, the stronger that connection will become.
Beautiful. Now take that connection and let it come back in towards your heart very slowly. Notice that feeling as you begin to let those points point inward towards your heart. Mm -hmm. And just breathe through your heart. Beautiful. And now really slowly, really gently float up to your throat, pointing at your chakras. Really slowly, really gently float up to your throat. Beautiful. Then slowly and gently float up to your third eye, both Crystals pointing in towards your chakras, slowly and gently floating up to your third eye. Feel that space, feel that polarity, breathe through your third eye. And then slowly move that all the way up above your head over your crown. Beautiful. Now you're going to let that move slowly back down, all the way back down to your heart center. Slowly, all the way back down through the third eye. The slower you move, the more you feel. Beautiful patience. Let those crystals come all the way back down to your heart center. And then we're going to do a very small circle, like a spiral over your heart. Very small spiral. Feel that like internal massage. Beautiful. Now look at me. We're going to hold them like this. And we're going to put our hands together and let the tips almost touch, but not completely. I'm going to use my thumbs to stop them from touching, but they're almost touching. And then put your hands in your lap. And then close your eyes and just breathe as I read you from one of the most ridiculously encoded books ever written by human beings. Remember, you can't keep up with this information, so just let yourself absorb it. Listen like, like an a orchestra. Listen like classical music, not like there's anything you're going to be able to hold on to. This is The Crystal Connection, a guidebook for personal and planetary ascension. We're only gonna read a few pages here. Introduction. Reality is crystalline in nature. Herein abides creation's most essential ordering principle for all light, all life, all intelligence is, in, is coded crystallinity. The overriding importance of the crystal connection is its universal interconnecting properties. The systematic coherence of all energy interactions, 
throughout the cosmos depends upon the highly ordered communicative interlinkage of coded crystalline matrices. Fundamentally, this is how creation works. For universal intelligence functions upon code principles, like code selectively interacts with like code. This is how the universal mind creates and maintains its differentiated integrity, as well as its holographic wholeness. Every part is selectively linked with other parts and the whole via the crystallinity principle. This preeminent principle functions as the codified multidimensional media through which universal intelligence operates. Quartz crystals and other precious stones are matrixed means by which the crystalline codes of personal and planetary consciousness are connectively interlinked with the higher light dimensions in an amplified, coherent manner. Physical plane crystals can be viewed as the materialized end of a broad interdimensional spectrum of crystalline matrices, originating on the higher planes of thought and extending through the many celestial and cosmic octaves into the realms of materiality. Not only can quartz and other crystals function as energy amplifiers, transformers, capacitors, modifiers, and focusers within the boundaries of the Earth's energy field, but also more important, they serve as physical plane link-up points with the next higher dimensional octave of universal crystallinity. And by so linking, selective access can be gained to the rest of the interdimensional spectrum network of coded crystalline energy patterns, thereby establishing communicative interrelationality. This is the singular importance of the crystal connection, the megadimensionally spanning spectrum of interrelated, highly ordered crystallinity to which access can be gained via crystalline code principles. Physical crystals are exceedingly helpful tools that assist the codes of individual consciousness to amplifiably interconnect with selective aspects of universal intelligence. They are, as well, central components of the light-based tools and technologies integral to the manifestation of a multidimensionally oriented new world era. The crystal connection is divided into three parts. Part one is a spiritual scientific treatise concerning the universal energy network, or the UEN, its origin, structure, and dynamics. Perspectives are shown regarding the nature of macroevolutionary soul growth sequences enacted in and through alpha omega threshold zones of the UEN. In chapter five in particular is a discourse regarding the unification of spirit and science into a spiritually oriented interdimensional science. As a whole, part one is philosophical in nature, setting the overarching parameters from which parts two and three flow. In part two, an integrated array of major topics are presented relating primarily to individual and collective preparation for the ascension and the further development and practical applications of interdimensional science. From mind center activation and healing to crystal grid works and advanced unified energy fields, a broad range of key subjects are covered in which multitudinous practical techniques, tools, designs, seed ideas, and procedures are presented. In part two is primarily 
sorry, part two is primarily practical in nature, spanning from what can easily be done by any interested individual to sophisticated blueprint outlines for professional applications. Finally, part three is visionary in scope, exploring expansive possibilities of a new world of unlimited, undreamed horizons. In all, the Crystal Connection helps lay the philosophical, conceptual, and practical foundations of a groundbreaking paradigm of interdimensional science with special focus upon its key roles in preparing for the personal and planetary ascension process. The higher light properties and usages of quartz crystals are the centrally recurrent theme pervading the book. Material of considerable depth, sometimes quite technical in nature, is presented in this subject area as an integral function of laying the groundwork for the extensive and complex field of crystallographic sacred science. The crystal connection is not based upon or limited to the domain of orthodox science. This will be clear after reading chapter five, where the marked distinctions between interdimensional science and orthodox science are explicated. Although various fundamentally universal scientific principles common to both domains are part of the book, their distinct divergences will be illustrated both explicitly and implicitly throughout the entire text. The reader should be aware that numerous techniques, tools, designs, and procedures presented in part two need to be approached with caution. Many of them, particularly those involving magnetics, lasers, advanced grid works, and unified energy fields are of such potential power that they should be engaged in only with knowledgeable discernment and personal responsibility. Finally, the Crystal Connection is offered both as an integrated holistic paradigm of knowledge and derived applications, and as a seed bed of ideas that may be selectively culled and integrated into other belief patterns as felt appropriate by each individual. The contents of this book may be taken as a whole or in discerned parts as it resonates truthfully within the, the reader. The authors sincerely hope that the Crystal Connection will serve to stimulate a new wave of the increasing of knowledge as well as innovative practical developments. May this text be a springboard from which each individual receives those sparks of light that will catalyze his or her fullest light potential in these times approaching the omega point of personal and planetary ascension May the people of light shine like the brightness of the firmament. Stay inside. That was one page. <laughs> one page. <laughs> uh, I've got two more pages to read. <laughs> this one I'm sharing specifically because of Heather. And when she first began this channeling process, she started seeing Enoch and Metatron's cube over and over again. And I haven't read this to her yet. And so this is for all of you, but especially for Heather. Um, the title of this one single page is called The Book of Knowledge, The Keys of Enoch, introduced by J.J. Hertak. The Book of Knowledge, The Keys of Enoch, is a document of future science in coded form. The keys affirm that it is everyone's birthright to co-evolve and co-create within the laws that govern the universe and human development. They challenge the assumptions of orthodox spiritual and scientific thought by working through a non-linear process of meta-language and presenting a cosmic view that emphasizes process over structure and consciousness evolution over material evolution. Each key written on several levels of inner mental attunement requiring musical and vibratory correspondences. I'm gonna say that again. Each key written on several levels of inner mental attunement requiring musical 
and vibratory correspondences is intended to provide some logistical and conceptual correlations pertinent to precise levels of cosmic oscillations that can be experienced in the material and non-material realms. Human beings are functioning at all times simultaneously in the physical and the paraphysical. The inner reaches of the human mind are endowed with powers and a versatile memory system that can break down sounds and thought forms in their fundamental frequencies and then amplify them with speeds and tones via hundreds of microfrequency generating oscillators operating together. The waveforms are given new and powerful manifestations, all of which can be stored in human memory. In effect, the modern orchestra is obsolete when compared with the sound reaches of the human mind as biosynthesizer. Thus, the keys of Enoch give us the understanding that there are radiations of thought forms through which critical levels of information can be sent and received. I'm going to say that again. Thus, the keys of Enoch give us the understanding that there are radiations of thought forms through which critical levels of information can be sent and received. That's called channeling, y'all. Some scholars felt when Clerk Maxwell brought together in a unified mathematical treatment the relationship between matter forces and immaterial light waves, it seemed there was nothing left to argue about in the realm of science. However, in the vast breakthroughs in understanding the microstructure of intelligence in the latter part of the 20th century, we are beginning to witness a mutation of the human race that can evolve our scientific consciousness beyond space binding and time binding. The keys, the keys work to open the conceptual doors of the greater evolutionary design from the biophysical to the astrophysical and spiritual frontiers of life. Remember that analogies with the prevailing concepts of classical science were disregarded and even attacked in the first attempts to model atomic structure, the matter-g-energy postulates of de Broglie, and the quantum corpuscular hypothesis of Planck and Einstein. It was only after such approaches had established their unity in representing the phenomena that the more earth-shaking and self-consistent self formalisms of Dirac, Schrodinger, and Heisenberg began to evolve. The keys were first experienced in real science, that is external space, as multidimensional, superluminal realities. The keys were experienced as multidimensional, superluminal realities. The keys were not channeled, but were witnessed in the concreteness of their own respective dimensions and multi-leveled systems. The fire letters were given in pictographic forms of superluminal light, so they could be seen and precisely written down. The keys are to function as ciphers for 64 areas of knowledge in the evolution of the human experience. For example, they reveal specific areas as well as whole systems of correspondence in, subs in such subjects as the language of the genetic code, archeological zones of earlier evolution on the planet, the artifacts of Mars, and the use of superluminal energy sources and others. Much of this revealed blueprint was not understood by the scientific community in the early 1970s when the keys were given. Now, however, we have witnessed the evolution of these concepts and seen the confirmation of much of this unique information within a larger picture of consciousness 
and physics. The emphasis of the Keys of Enoch is on the new direction of humankind's innovations through which the new sciences, <clears throat> research and development of consciousness can unify humankind with other parts of creation of which it is not always conscious, yet within it and surrounding it. In coevolution with other consciousness, uh, sorry, with other physical, mental, and spiritual potentials, the veils of ignorance are lifted by higher consciousness, which leads to interaction with greater families of intelligence in the universe who share the same higher evolution. No longer will there be triumphs of materialistic science at the expense of consciousness and spiritual domains. There will be instead a unique interconnection with the continuous transformation of form we must realize that humankind is no longer of the old nature, subspecies, but already participating in supernature, recognizing that creation by pure thought is God. And as creation expands, this pure thought cascades and models itself on the meta design of the universe. In effect, there is a blueprint given of how the discovery and recreative power of pure thought ultimately comes into being by ultimate human. As we work together, let us realize that our destiny depends on faith growing in the integrity and indwelling power of the human slash God partnership and the spirit of creativity which rules over it. Let an active faith in a positive future bring forth creativity of the divine within the human and may the keys open the door to a new human community in the spirit of the highest and show us that we as its representatives have an active role in the redesign of the universe. Say what? So just feel that. Just feel that. There's no way you can comprehend it in your mind. Just feel it. That was two pages, individual pages. I have one more page, one half page to read. And there's a reason. As I read this, I want you all to access what it's describing inside of your mind space, inside of your third eye. Follow along as best you can. This is introduction to part one. Crystallinity is the code of creation. The foundational essence and structure of all manifestation is its crystalline ordering, which spans all of existence from the subatomic microscopic levels to the mega dimensional microscopic levels of reality. The precise exactitude of essence and form inherent in each energetic unit throughout the universal mind derives from and is sustained by causal code patterns of light. Causal code patterns of light. These code patterns of intelligence precipitate as crystallization structures, as they are extended into the expanses of creation. Therein functioning as templates of highly ordered stability through which their imprinted light blueprint is enacted in manifestation. The entire omniverse is founded and sustained by network of interdimensionally interconnected crystalline code patterns that function as the fundamental coordinating blueprints for all vibrational interactions throughout the universal mind. This all-encompassing network is termed the UEN, the Universal Energy Network. Part one of the Crystal Connection is an in-depth exploration of the elegantly complex structure and inner workings of the UEN. From the heights of number-based abstract light to the depths of material plane crystallization, 
universal intelligence functions within the highly ordered principles of divine law. This law is the keystone of light in creation and the spiritual scientific understanding of creation's many dimensioned dynamics. Part one approaches spiritual knowledge from a scientific philosophic orientation. The realms of spirit and science unite within the revolutionary paradigm of interdimensional science, the ramifications of which open new horizons of research and development, many of which are explored in part two. The sacred principles intrinsic to all reality are the basis for every facet of interdimensional science. Therein, the crystalline codes of the cosmos are decoded and established as the indices and measures of a new world science and, and the boundaries that have kept the earth plane limited to a minute spectrum of universal realities for so long are breached and illimitable multidimensional potentialities are activated as ascension into the kingdom of light is fulfilled. I'm going to say this last sentence again. Therein the crystalline codes of the cosmos are decoded and established as the indices and measures of a new world science and the boundaries that have kept the earth plane limited to a minute spectrum of universal realities for so long are breached and illimitable multidimensional potentialities are activated as ascension into the kingdom of light is fulfilled. That's what we're actively doing right now. The reader may find the material in part one and in some sections of part two to be quite complex, for it is written on many levels of spiritual intellectual understanding and assumes a base knowledge concerning fundamental energy dynamics principles. A book recommended as a complementary source of knowledge is Itzhak Bensoff's Stalking the Wild Pendulum on the Mechanics of Consciousness. Further, repeated readings of part one at various intervals of time may facilitate the assimilation of progressively deeper levels of comprehension. Certain phrases and key ideas may function as coded seed thoughts and catalysts for activating higher light thought processes and energy processes in consciousness. Therefore, read between the lines also using the intuitive mental planes of awareness to perceive the greater light realities that the text depicts within the somewhat limitingly linear confines of an earth-based language system. Enjoy the rarefied reaches of the universal mind's multifaceted complexity and elegant grandeur. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, relax your body. Take a deep inhale, expand like a balloon. Exhale, relax your body. Now I just want you to notice what it feels like. How big does your body feel? How light or heavy does your body feel? Where is the center of your body? What happens if you breathe through that center? Inhale and exhale through the center of your body.
Beautiful. Now take this awareness to the base of your spine and imagine a bright white light. Inhale this white light all the way up to your crown. Then exhale that white light all the way down to your root. Inhale that white light up above the top of your head. Exhale that white light down below the base of your root. Inhale that white light all the way up into the sky. Exhale that white light all the way down into the earth. Inhale that white light all the way up into outer space. Then exhale that white light all the way down to the center of the earth. Then inhale that white light all the way up as high as you can possibly imagine to the edge of the known physical universe. Find yourself in your sacred space. Take a moment to notice how you feel. Look around, notice what you see. Has anything changed? Did you leave any notes for yourself? Is there anything you need to add to your sacred space? Is there a piece of furniture or an extra room? An art studio, a martial arts dojo. Is there anything you desire to add to your sacred space? If so, visualize it right now. Add a hot tub or a ping pong table or a full body massage chair. What would you buy if you had an infinite credit card? What would you order from QVC? Take a moment to appreciate your new addition. Touch it, feel it, smell it, use it. Enjoy it. Realize the more visceral you allow the experience to be, the more visceral you have the experience. The more energy you put into your imagination, the more energy your imagination gives back to you in the form of sensation. Notice this. To demonstrate the power of your imagination to feed you back energy. Find a space in your sacred space where you can make a nice little bonfire. <clears throat> make a nice little bonfire and see it burning in front of you. Hold your hands out, feel the heat.
And now take a step forward, step closer to the bonfire. And feel the heat increase. And then now we're going to take another step forward and step into the bonfire. Step into the center of this fire and let it purify you. Let this fire burn away your fear. Let this fire burn away your doubt. Let this fire burn away your sadness, your lack your anger. Feel this light purifying you from your toes all the way up to your crown. Beautiful. Now from this purifying bath of fire, I want you to find or summon your portal to go find your counsel. Go find your counsel and assemble them. And once you have your council together, join us in the hyper council. Visualize the entire group in a circle, each with a circle over their head. Visualize a circle of circles. Notice what this feels like, this union of energy. Notice what this collective network feels like. See it clearly in your mind's eye. And notice what it feels like in your body. Look around this group and thank each one for their presence. Thank each one for sharing their energy. Feel that with each additional member, our power is magnified geometrically. Each individual member does not bring one singular consciousness. Each member brings many conscious beings and those people, those beings bring other beings. Feel these nested circles within circles. Allow yourself to breathe through this hyper council. Breathe through this group as though it were your physical body. Breathe through this group as though it were your physical body. Beautiful. Now feel the communal wisdom you have access to through this group. Feel the eons 
of stories, of emotions, knowledge, understanding, love, and light. Beautiful. Now begin to visualize your timeline moving outwards in front of you. This is your life stream, your timeline. It's like a train track you're moving forward on. And utilizing the power of the group, I want you to imagine this timeline moving outwards in both directions away from you. See a different version of you on each one of these timelines. Feel that each alternative version of you believes it is the real version. See clearly to them, you are an alternative timeline. Feel the truth of all of these possibilities. Feel the truth of all of these selves. Feel that each one is an original experiment. Learning its own lessons. And then bringing those lessons back home to its source. As you move through all of these different versions, all of these alternative probable selves, notice that different ones have different skills. Different alternative cells have different wardrobes, different colored hair, different skills and abilities, different friends, Know that there are ways to sample and pull skills and knowledge from one timeline into another. But what we are going to do right now is even better. As you see, this infinite stream of timelines, infinite stream of possibilities, infinite versions of you. Use the gravity and the power of the Council of Councils to pull all of these probable selves into your center right now. Visualize pulling all of your probable selves into alignment right now on one timeline. Imagine integrating all of these perspectives simultaneously. Imagine accepting all of these lessons simultaneously. Imagine accepting all of this love and this light simultaneously.
I have integrated all probable selves. I have integrated all alternative selves. Feel every story you have ever told yourself present right now in this moment. Feel every emotion you have ever given yourself right now in this moment. Allow every part of your story to align and integrate itself. Visualize this integration. What does it look like to harmonize all alternative selves? Much like a rainbow prism uniting back into pure white light. much like a rainbow prism reuniting itself back into pure white light. From this unified perception, feel the presence of the group. Feel the power of a group of harmonically balanced beings, of integrated holistic beings. Feel and see this circle of circles, this hyper council. Now we're going to take a deep inhale and we're going to chant Om three times. And what we're going to do is we are going to use our sound to solidify our connection to this space. Deep inhale. Oh. Again, deep inhale. One more time, deep inhale. Accepting every sensation, accepting every thought, accepting every moment exactly as it is.
Deep inhale. Exhale, appreciate this space, appreciate this connection. Promise yourself to come back, promise yourself to explore. What can we do with this communal connection? This is the beginning of collective consciousness. Two or more gathered in my name. This is a timeless process. You have completed this process many times. And you will complete it many more. Welcome home, dear children. Welcome home. Gently bring yourself back into your sacred space. Notice if anything has changed. Follow your breath back down. Back down your soul stream. back down to the Milky Way galaxy, all the way back down to the solar system, back down to planet Earth, and all the way back down into your body. Feel your spirit filling up your body like liquid. And moving your fingers, wiggling your toes, and opening your eyes whenever you're ready. All righty then. That was a little uh, that was a little journey there. <sighs> that was a little journey there. All right, we're gonna go around. I want to hear anything you can share about that experience at all. <laughs> I I know I know some of y'all are having trouble <laughs> being in a physical body. It was it was very hard for me to leave <laughs> leave the the hyper council it was so bright and i'm so hot <laughs> I'm, I'm so hot and i think marvelous transdimensionated i think she disappeared she went into a higher dimension <laughs> she dematerialized um all right uh Kristen, can you go first tell us anything you can about your journey uh, um it was incredible because I was visualizing just before you spoke it. And I love when that happens. Um, before you said, walk into the fire, I was already sitting in the fire. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in lotus pose and I was just floating. I'm like, yep, here we are. Receiving the warmth. And then also fires other transmutational properties of burning away. And then uh, I was yawning a lot. So that means I'm moving a lot of energy. I saw myself transform into a dragon as I brought, um, exhaled a fire out my mouth. And then... I saw all of us sitting in circles. We were all in our lotus flowers on top of the fire. And other members that aren't here tonight were also present mm -hmm. in a circle. And 
each of us had different colored flames and they would shift every so often. A lot of blues and purples and pinks and yellows. It was very beautiful. And then I saw everyone's council around them and I saw the council around them and the council around them. It was like fairies that were whispering from one layer to another. Um, that was very profound. Um, I'm, I don't necessarily see a sacred place when I go. A lot of times it's just the void. I don't always have things to bookmark or to look at when I go mm -hmm. into my sacred space, but I've just come to accept that's just my process that mm -hmm. I'm still in a place. It's just not exactly how you're guiding the process. Um, and then seeing the timelines, I kept seeing myself as a medicine woman and also as being a witch. And I saw how I was crucified and killed for being a medicine woman. And I saw how the witch attributes that are coming through me in the form of alchemy is as part of that past and future timelines and I'm integrating both of those and I could feel my heart pound a lot more than what I've ever felt in a meditation before and it was very powerful to state aloud that I am integrating these versions of myself into this incarnation Mm, beautiful <laughs> going back thank in you. and talk about it thank you i love that that's beautiful uh marvelous can you tell us uh anything you can about the journey um i'm still trying to come back um so getting to my sacred place opening the spot where the council sits with me um it's it's still incomplete so you know i'm getting guides coming in um so some spots are still open um mm -hmm. remember they're like little golden pillows we're in a circle there's 13 spots mm -hmm. i'm number 13 um but it's it's not complete yet but so i brought those with me and we met together and it was just so beautiful all of us uh kind of showing grace to one another and and just showing um reverence to to one another not not in a like in a humble way just mm -hmm. just like like welcome home like 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 work together right and and showing each other like that that much um again the only word that i can think of is reverence for the magic that we each uh, bring to this universe and then um as we kept expanding i just saw the flower of light of life it was golden it was just shining it was just like pulling itself together little by little like but but i can observe it from above it was like a huge golden flower of life just just like in the middle of space it was it was just in, immense um and then i didn't want to come back <laughs> Um, I didn't want to come back, but then coming back, yeah, going back to my house and I kind of felt rushed. Like I want to, I want to be in the house. Like I want to observe, like, uh, but I did create a new art room there, which mm. is, I hadn't, I didn't have, you know, I have like, I want an art room, but I didn't think to have an art room in my sacred space. So I was dancing in there. That was, that was cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, of course, I have a hat and 
cold and then I felt a lot of vibration in my entire body like almost trying to escape me from like pulling myself off my body you 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 know when you're like trying to do that uh, what do people call it when you when you leave your body but you're mm -hmm. conscious so my body yeah the, my body felt like that and um the crystals were hot and mm -hmm. I also saw myself as a huge um crystal uh the um clear quartz uh, as one of those and and no I didn't want to come back mm -hmm. was... beautiful <laughs> thank you I feel all of that love it um Bridget Tell us anything you can about your journey. Uh, like Kristen was saying, I I don't really have a space. It's just, well, it's dark, but when we were pulling us into the crystal space, it got bright. It was all bright um, there, um, bright white light. And um. <laughs> I could see the timeline, but it wasn't really like a straight line. Like I was standing in the center and like there were circles of lines mm. and everybody was on a different like line. And it, it was more like they were being pulled into me and I was in the center. Um, but mostly I felt, you know, a, a lot of pressure in my head. I thought my head was going to implode for a minute. <laughs> it was so strong and, and powerful. I ended up taking everything down because my head still, I still feel it. Like something's still pushing into my brain. Mm -hmm. um, but the, my, the fire, when you brought up the fire, it looked blue to me. So I was pulling a blue flame into me um, and it was just I just felt warm I didn't feel you know was it hot or cold or it's just all very peaceful to me I don't know I've just seemed very other than that when I get pains and stuff it's all even that doesn't really hurt as much as some other things I've been through so it's like trying to understand what each thing is telling me, what I'm supposed to be understanding from all the different sensations, what they mean and translating them. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. And you'll want to look up the violent flame. That's a thing. Totally. Thank you. Um, who else we got? Heather, tell us what you experienced. Um, I experienced, um, well, I guess at first I didn't really feel a whole bunch. Um, but I did feel like with the crystals, I remember when we were first doing that, I, I felt more tension in my head and then the swirls around the heart. I felt a little bit of something in the heart. And then you said to focus on like whatever was the center of our body. And that I felt that strongly, <laughs> um, so, which is like the heart, I guess I felt that. And then in the um the visioning I guess um in the sacred space the, the only thing I noticed that had changed was there was a big red bow on the mirror this time it's like come on it's a gift now <laughs> you should actually be <laughs> it and not avoiding it um and there was the hot tub was was actually I did enjoy that a little bit um like the bubbles of the hot tub and but I didn't really feel any warmth like even in the fire I didn't really feel warmth but I did the light kind of like coming up and like you know tickling up it was nice um and then there was the interesting I mean I'm still trying to figure it trying to understand it but I mean that was kind of cool to think about all the different um like different possible lives that you, different ways you could be like as different colors kind of and I've you know had a lot of anxiety and, and well just not being able to decide what I should be so all these just seeing them as all different colors and 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 kind of 
taking that and bringing all parts of those in in as one as like it's like white light which is kind of interesting so like I mean, all those possible things become one. So I, I'm still thinking about that, but um, I, I just kind of see it all as one. And then we're all together um, in that big hyper council and, and all, all of us being white light kind of, and, and it was all kind of structured as crystalline. So it was kind of, I, you know, being part of something white light structure. I, I, anyway, I was very, well, I don't know if relaxing, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, um, it was a cool feeling though. Um, I don't know how to describe it or anything ineffable, <laughs> but, um, but it was, I did, yeah, it, it did feel good and it did feel good. That's all I can say right now. Ineffable. That's a good word. <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> word for it. Thank you, hon. Good job. And um, Emmy. Okay. Wow. That was pretty incredible, guys. Um, I've just, you know, I, I just walked through the fire and uh, I started to, you know, after the crystals, I felt a lot of pressure and I could, it was amazing how it could really feel that around my crown. And as we were moving down the chakras and everything, I'm just really cool. Um, felt like uh just it was amazing to see my I, i've always thought of my you know different timelines you know what what paths i've chosen um so seeing that all coming together into the center of me like a prism that was a very good way to look at that um the sitting around with you all in the you know the council of councils it's just incredible opening. Like I just felt like my my crown and um, just a lot of chills, and goosebumps all over my head and the back of my neck, and um, just a very I feel I feel like a, <laughs> a very powerful connection and just like strength, like a strong like. Uh, I don't know, just powerful. Lots of white, white light, just surging through, you know, all of us and connecting us is a lot to uh, take in, but it feels amazing, if that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you, Han. Um, it was really hot for me the whole thing holding the i mean i don't know how much y'all notice the crystals but i always get hot when i meditate with crystals and um and it really stabilizes the the mind and um and when we assimilated all of our timelines it was mm -hmm. just pure white I, I there was no division and i couldn't see differences between anyone but i could feel everyone was there but it was just white light. And I didn't say anything for like a couple of minutes and I didn't want to come back either. Marvelous. <laughs> I was like, it was like, what am, what am I, what am I going to leave this for? What am I going to do back there? You know? Um, but I knew we were, we were running, we were running short on time. Um, it, it was very powerful and I'm very hot. I'm still really hot <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> thank you all for playing along and thank you for absorbing Wow. The Crystal Connection book, y'all. This is, it's a crazy high frequency book. And the reason that I wanted to do it is that we installed the concept in your mind of frameworks of light. The whole universe has stepped down frequencies of light. And when we talk about ascension, that's what we're literally doing is we're vibrating at higher and higher frequencies up a spectrum of light, literally. And, um, Every time I read this book, it makes me hot. And every time I read it, just like the Arcturians, I find something else new. And um, it's, it's a portal. And it is, in, it is encoded information. And we're going to finish tonight by thinking about this wonderful thing that we're learning, light language, right? We're learning to work with and encode that light ourselves. 
So we're going to end tonight by going around um, with a little bit of light language, and then we're going to do an overdub, okay? So we're going to go around one time. Everybody's going to take their turn, and then we're going to all speak light language at the same time, as quietly or as loudly as you want to. Okay, here we go. I'll go first. <clears throat> You're just going to do one sentence. Un dele manakoto chopuku tu tama se kalanete et ulukushu mamanteye. Marvelous. Takarana uti isi atanama utura ti in ahataka utun a ikinuka isi. Thank you. Heather, uh, Kristen. Hmm. Heather can go. Uh, no, I was looking at you. I just said her <laughs> name because I had to take her mute off. Um, Ishkanana and Sani Hana Holy Antanana Hena or Sona Hana Si or Ifsina Hara or Sona. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Heather. Ugo es maña huele peatoso, hi a cacues, e guño move a la tuyo, e igaza la tuso no e itas. Beautiful. Bridget. A tuca samica, ananaco, patisiquipa, anamachiquita sanan, anaconamasiquita das. A la casi, ananaki, anamacho. Thank you, Emmy. Toko rondo bot robo. Tondo rombombondo. Perfect. Now everybody light language together. Ready? And go. Ah, Thank you, each and every one, for the energy of your soul and your time and your love and your light. In these words, <laughs> we love you, universe. Thank you for playing this game with us. Namaste. Namaste. Beautiful, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, homework is to play with your council of councils. If you did not put yourself in the center, please try again. And when you do, live it up, love it up, and let us know what happens. Um, and then I will I will give you guys something else to play with middle of the week this week. But other than that, enjoy, y'all. We're opening doors here. Oh, and I did want to make a point. Uh, Kristen mentioned this, and this is important. I don't really talk about this very often. Like, we have all agreed to, like, connect, you know, in astral realms. And, and we all have given our permission to play with each other's energy. Um, you know, she was trying to help somebody out, but what she's talking about is very real. Like, you don't want to be messing with other people's psychic energy unless you have their permission, because that gets into manipulation very easily, very quickly, y'all. It's not our responsibility yeah. for anyone else's healing journey. So we've all given our ability and our consent to, like, we agree to be on the panel. Um, but if you want to help somebody and you want to use the council, that's awesome. But just ask for their permission. Can Is it okay if I give you some healing energy? Is it okay if I give you some Reiki? Is it okay if I give you some Chi? doesn't really matter what you call it. You just want to ask for permission, okay? Because we do want to honor free will. All right, everybody. Love you so much. We'll see you on the live stream. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs>